tonight uh, I wanted to just share a little bit about our upcoming full moon that we have in only a few days time uh, hopefully maybe give you a little bit of inspiration of things you might be able to do in the coming days or on the full moon itself hi Liz welcome honey so um, for us here in Australia our full moon actually falls this Thursday which is July the 14th uh, it falls if you want to be really specific at 4 37 a.m. for us here in Australia uh, for those outside of Australia I know it is falling on the 13th of July in London at 7 37 p.m. so I think that is the BST time uh, and New York it's the 13th of July as well at 2.37 p.m. Uh, and outside of that you will have to uh, look up where it is in your part of the world but it will be around the 13th or the 14th of July that the full moon will be falling and this will be a super full moon everyone so in June we had a super full moon and this is our second super full moon for 2022 and also our last super full moon for 2022 as well so what does a super full moon mean that means that the earth and the moon are going to be extra close so it means that we're going to have extra full moon energy that we will be receiving and feeling so it's essentially going to amplify any of the work that you are doing around this particular full moon so that's kind of exciting and means definitely a time to think about what it is that you want to be doing uh, with this July full moon energy if there is something that you want to you know add some extra energy and intent into and around this particular full moon now all our full moons we really have what what in the witch's eyes all full moons we have about three days that we can really utilize that energy to the to its best so the day of the full moon and then you have a day either side of the full moon so even if you can't necessarily perhaps organize yourself to be able to do it on the day that it actually falls remembering it doesn't have to be that evening it can be any time during the day and it doesn't have to be right at like I'm not getting up at 4 37 in the morning to do something I don't know about you um, but so for us here in Australia it would be on the Wednesday Thursday or Friday that they will be the days that this energy can be best utilized that full moon energy outside of that we are considered will either be in the waning moon or the waxing moon so that growing energy or that releasing energy um, just so that you're aware and you know you've got that little bit of space to be able to work with this particular energy uh, hey Silvana hey Felicity lovely to have so many joining me tonight so this full moon is also going to be in the sign of Capricorn that's a, a one one of our wonderful earthy signs so um, we've got some keywords particularly connected to Capricorn and of course for all of our full moons this is an amplifying energy so we can really do any kind of manifesting any divination any meditation uh, of course definitely charging all of our crystals you can charge any of your other sacred tools that you might want to as well charge up moon water if if you want to or literally any other potions or concoctions that you want to work with every full moon is really brilliant for being able to do all of those things or any one of those things that you might want to pick out one of those perhaps to focus on instead but with this being a full moon that's in the sign of Capricorn some of the key areas that you might want to think about is structure being organized ambition and career patience diplomacy having restraint and self-discipline justice major life goals and also being thrifty so these are some of the key words or key energies that get particularly connected with the Capricorn uh, moon or the Capricorn energy so if any of those particularly jump out at you it might be something you want to perhaps more focus on with this particular full moon uh, that's coming up now also Capricorn has some particular areas 
that we can focus on on a healing level. So that's not to say we can't do whatever healing that we're feeling called to. Certainly full moon is going to amplify all healing energies, but it will particularly be more powerful for the bones, the skeletal system, for our teeth and also our knees. So if any of those areas have been causing you grief, this is the time to do some particular healing work. Um, and have healing intent for those particular areas at this full moon that's coming up because that Capricorn energy is going to give it a real boost. So like I said, if it's something outside of that still, don't feel like you can't do it. You certainly can. It's just the Capricorn energy will give those areas that extra boost for you uh, this particular month. Now, if you are thinking about doing something on a healing level, obviously you can do things if you're Reiki trained or you're some other tradition of healing trained, definitely focus on giving yourself healing in those specific areas or wherever you're needing it. But if you're looking for a spell or something like that to be able to um, do some healing or even to be able to send healing to somebody else distantly, um, Mystical Dragon, I have we have about 40 spells in my online book of shadows. They're completely free to access on our website, mysticaldragon.com.au. So jump on there, you'll see our book of shadows and you'll be able to go through. I've got a couple of healing spells on there. Particularly, I love my Archangel Raphael healing spell, but there are a couple. So have a look and see what might resonate with you if you're looking for a specific spell for healing at, at this full moon or at any time really. The other thing I like, I wanted to uh, kind of emphasize with um, this July full moon as well is, so I find that all the earth signs, our three earth signs, so Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo, these earth signs tend to really help on the manifesting side of things. So that makes this Capricorn full moon a really good moon to do any manifesting work that you might be thinking you might need. So that means anything you want to be bringing into the physical, this is a time to be adding energy to that. So whether that is you actually need to physically manifest perhaps, I don't know, a car, a holiday, um, the money to be able to pay you know tuition fees or whatever it happens to be this is a really good time to do any kind of manifesting work because that Capricorn energy is going to manifest or sorry amplify that manifesting so that you know bringing into the physical side of things creating um, so it's really good with setting goals you might want to sit down and just use this time to plan out what are my goals what are my short-term goals what are my long-term goals for the future I haven't really had time to sit down and map them out so maybe you might want to sit down and work out what are they and even just write them down create a vision board maybe this is something this is very good energy for creating a vision board which helps you in that manifesting process you might like to create a vision board or if you're not really one that likes the vision boards, you might just want to have perhaps some lists or some dot points or something you create in your book of shadows or your journal that you like to go to refer to. Perhaps you prefer the written word more so than the pictures and having a poster somewhere. Um, I find both work really well. I love vision boards and I've had really, really good results with vision boards. Um, and I've also had really good results with simply having like a double page spread in my journal and writing and putting all my intent and my thoughts into, you know, a, a double page spread in a journal. So both can be really effective. Um, what, what you need to do is refer to it every so often. So don't just do it and put it somewhere and forget about it because that doesn't help as much with your manifesting. But don't obsess over it and have to go look at it all the time, every single day. Like, make time to go and focus on some of those things and connect with them on that feeling level. See them, you know, in your mind, kind of do some daydreaming and see them playing out. And what would happen if you went on that holiday or what would that car look like or, you know, all of those things. You have to kind of give yourself some time to allow some of that daydreaming to happen because that's where you'll really connect to it and help to pull it to you, help to bring it to you. Uh, also, this is a great time to do any kind of reading that's connected to manifesting and abundance and all of those sorts of things, spiritual and non-spiritual, you know, so 
Um, books by like Jerry and Esther Hicks I find are really great for manifesting and getting in that abundance flow and all that kind of stuff but there's loads of books out there also stuff like the barefoot investor is a non-spiritual very grounded book that's got great advice in it so you know anything that's focused around manifesting um, wealth you know it's doing goals all those sorts of things that's ideal stuff to be connecting to at the moment so remember it doesn't have to be magical it can just be doing things that are kind of in alignment even grounded practical things that are in alignment with the energies of this Capricorn moon it, it will be amplified it'll be easier to do you'll find you might get more in the flow actually read more of that book or you know really get into that energy a little bit more so please know it doesn't have to be magical just because it's a full moon. Uh, we can do many mundane things uh, in these energies too. Right, now I also have quite a few um, spells on Mystical Dragons Book of Shadows that is about manifesting as well. So if you are thinking that a manifesting side of things you want to do perhaps some spell work to assist you with your manifesting, I do have quite a few um, spells I think there was about three or four in particular that are to help you with manifesting goals and manifesting certain intent. So do jump on there and have a look. Um, being that there's a few, it means I take a few different approaches to being able to do it. So have a look at them and see what kind of resonates with you if that's something that you're wanting to work on as well. We can also, you know, um, refresh and decorate our altar if there's something we're particularly manifesting it's good to refresh your altar and bring in fresh energy around that too and maybe dress your altar in connection to that intent so that it it also can help you in you know drawing whatever it is to you so when i say dress your altar it's like think about what colors connect to um manifesting or connecting to the intent that you have so a lot of the times when we are manifesting colors like green and gold get very connected with things that are uh, wealth abundance manifesting bringing in that kind of flow but depending what it is you might find there's a different color and being able to dress it with certain crystals and images and statues energies that perhaps are assisting you in that spell or that manifesting um, and things that make you think of elements of whatever it is that you're manifesting as well so you know maybe I see Kelly's says a car so maybe a car if you think about you know what does that give you freedom what represents freedom to you you might even put a horse on because for me that's the first thing I think of when I think of freedom think of the elements of the car and and how you can portray it so you might even put a toy car on or you might find photos of that specific car that you're wanting to manifest and put some photos um, on your altar um, there's so many different elements that you could put there depending what having a car means to you independence all sorts of things so you know think about those elements and what might represent some of those elements and you could put them on your altar and that would help in that dressing your altar and helping to manifest just in a different way it's almost like having a vision board um, but on your altar rather than having it on you know a piece of paper so you know that's just one one way you could think about on a manifesting level now also kind of following on from the manifesting Capricorn is really good at focusing on things like career and our ambition so this could be um, and being that I know that we're kind of not in a great place uh, globally financially type of thing you know kind of people are talking about recessions and all sorts of stuff I thought it'd be worth talking about this career aspect which is maybe you need a new job maybe you need a pay rise maybe you want to keep your job and put energy into keeping your job so this Capricorn moon will be really good at any element of career any element of a job so whether it is I don't have a job and I want to manifest it whether it is that you want the pay rise or like I said you know maybe you're looking for a better job or a promotion whatever element it is that in regards to your job or your career we can you can certainly put energy into that at this particular Capricorn full moon so 
um, once again something like a job can be approached you can actually do a specific vision board or decorate your altar in connection to that job whether it's a new job or um, maybe you want to really you know there might be someone that's being a problem at work or even a few people and you want the work environment to improve that might be the element of your job so you can kind of do your vision board in what you want in your work and what you want around your work and to you know maybe have negative energy that's cleared away or do you know what I mean like there's so many ways you can approach it so with a vision board it doesn't have to be putting every one of your goals on it you can focus on specific areas so you could do a vision board specific to I want a new job I want a new career or what you want your job or career to look like the things you would like improved the elements you would like um, highlighted I guess you could certainly do that with a vision board or just like I mentioned earlier you know journaling getting all of that written down do it in a journal or you could focus an altar specifically around your work and the manifesting that you are maybe doing with your work so with work I would definitely think about a green or a gold because career is connected to money so it's often a green or a gold that gets connected in color wise with any work that we do on that level interestingly though um, when it comes to candle colors it's usually orange or yellow that are the candles that you would select color wise to burn uh, for any kind of career jobs um, I think that's partly because it connects with uh, our solar plexus and our navel chakras and being able to express those aspects of ourself and stand in our truth and there's a lot of elements of that that come in with it but the orange and yellow are your traditional uh, witchcraft connections that come in when it comes to choosing candle colors so if you do a candle spell in relation to your career on any level then they're colors to consider doing an orange or a yellow candle you would also want if you're working on crystals that you maybe want to charge up to work with your spell work or even just to do uh, alone so charge up with your intent and carry with you without having to do any spell work for career you would be looking at some of those money crystals so like your citrine or your pyrite or most of your green crystals have a connection with money as well so you might have uh, perhaps a green jade at home, a green aventurine, a malachite, all of those crystals all connect with money and can help with money flow and can certainly assist you when it comes to your career and you know being able to perhaps get a job, get a promotion etc etc. So think about those and being able to charge those up as well. On a daily level uh, if you are working when it, with um, career on some level I want to suggest to you to think about gods and goddesses maybe that you can see might be most associated with your industry so um, in a recent post I actually made a few suggestions so for instance Athena often gets connected with the military um, goddess Bridget who it's coming up to her time very soon um, and she has connections with writing with anything that's crafty but also she has strong connections with the kitchen as well so if your industry if your work connected with any of those areas she could be one to call on to ask to assist with the career stuff you've got going on uh, Hecate is very much a very protective goddess so anything to do with protection things like security industry police those kinds of industries Hecate would be really good to call in to assist you um, so think along those lines uh, and kind of try and work that way if there's a particular divinity that you're wanting to call on to ask their assistance um, Fortuna or Lakshmi sorry I did grab some cards to show you as I was talking and I forgot so Lakshmi or Fortuna would be good deities uh, just for any kind of work promotion career type stuff they're both connected with money so because we earn money through our career they would both be good ones to call on if you're not sure which divinity to call on but you want help with a job or a promotion so I'll just quickly because I did grab these out there's Athena which has got our military connection and Goddess Bridget though that one's a more interesting Goddess Bridget there's some real fiery imagery of her that's out there as well 
uh, and goddess Hecate which is very protective uh, beautiful energy as well so that's just to give you a few ideas to get you thinking but certainly um, you know maybe do a little bit of research or see who comes to mind for you in connection to your industry uh, or the job that you're, you're looking at what industry that's connected to in particular so that's a few ideas which you could pull all together if you wanted to do a candle spell um, you might start by dressing your altar as I've suggested you might charge up an orange or a yellow candle with the intent of getting that new job or promotion etc with the feeling um, that affirming what it is that you're wanting you might charge up a, an appropriate crystal that I've mentioned and set that up with your candle so that it's right next to your candle you might light those up Put all that feeling saying uh, ask the goddess that you may be or the god that you may be a feeling drawn to work with to help bless this path to help assist you in whatever way it is that you're needing help where it comes to your career or getting a new job and ask them to help you and to guide you in those steps uh, and leave your candle to burn all the way out so it can be that simple to work on that career level if you're looking to do some spell work there just remember that when we ask for shifts and changes when it comes to career that once you've requested it and you've done your spell a don't obsess about it um, try and let it go to universe but also b make sure that if any opportunities come up that you are ready to work with them and to do the action because it always requires us to do action after we do spell work you know when the opportunity come we need to be able to grab it and follow through with it and not just think that it's just going to fall in our laps although sometimes it does but often it requires us to do some kind of action and follow through afterwards universal kind of bring us the opportunities that we need because because of our specific request now the last area I wanted to cover when it comes to this Capricorn super moon because I obviously can't go through every keyword here but I like to pull out a few to chat to you guys about I thought patience might be a good one to discuss um, and to just you know share a few ideas around patience being able to find some more patience which isn't always easy so I would certainly if patience is being an issue for you at present um, I would certainly consider perhaps doing at least a meditation uh, and set your intent for it being around maybe being calm and patient uh, and universe just just focus your intent around that and see if any guidance comes through for you about ways you might be able to better handle yourself perhaps in certain situations that might be triggering you I would also suggest maybe working with some crystals that you might find to help you in being a bit calmer and a bit more patient uh, crystals like white or blue howlite is good and a lot of your soft blue stones will really help with patience and being calm so that's crystals like your blue calcite uh, your celestite your angel light now they're the main ones that jump to mind but I know there's plenty plenty more that are out there so just some suggestions for you do charge it up between two hands like I mentioned earlier um, when it came to career charge it up between two hands thinking about it feeling it affirming what it is you're asking the crystals help for and then carry it with you so that it can help you to be calmer and to bring that bit more patience for you and even sometimes I find if I have it handy in a pocket for things like you know being calm or patient then if something's starting to press my buttons I have something in my pocket I can fiddle with which also helps to bring some more calm and patience and is like my trigger reminding me I need to be calm in this situation I need to be patient so that can be helpful by itself then I was also thinking about is there a spell that we could maybe do that might assist us with patience as well so we could uh, certainly do a spell burning some of your favorite incense or herb so that we kind of it, I always find that helps get us in the right space you know it kind of helps you to center and relax when we do our spell work I would suggest writing the word patience on a piece of paper and place that on your altar or your working space for doing a spell um, you could also use a, a sigil or a ruin instead of the word patience so if you wanted to create a special sigil for patience 
or if you went looking and knew that there was a particular ruin that connected for you for patients then you could use that instead of a word or if you wanted to use a whole perhaps a sentence that was affirming patients in some way for you and of course you could use this to rearrange it to another focus instead if you wanted and then place uh, I'm suggesting four tea lights around it because that helps to bring in some structure and some grounding around patients so we're trying to kind of be more patient more grounded so I think um, the four would be the perfect number to use there and tea lights would work really well so place your four tea lights kind of in a bit of I say a circle I suppose the four would more be a bit of a square around your your word uh, on your altar so that it's kind of like your word is lit up in the center of your tea lights then definitely feeling seeing affirming so if there's particular situations that you know are really pressing your buttons and need your patience and calm then see yourself being calm in those situations see yourself you know having patience and being able to deal with everyone in a really calm and considerate way you know feel what that feels like to get through that in that you know in that better space it'll be good for you it'll be good for everyone involved I'm sure or if there's not a particular situation just see yourself carrying yourself through the day through different things being really calm and patient throughout each one of those situations that might arise and just feel that sense of calm and patience and what that feels like within yourself as well so you can charge everything up I would do it just hands you know sending that energy in uh, over your tea lights and your words that you've got set up there and then I would tend to call on a goddess like Kuan Yin because I find Kuan Yin is beautiful calm she's so heart-centered compassionate loving she tends to bring in all those qualities that we're really looking for when we're requesting things like calm and patience so someone like Kuan Yin would be beautiful to call in to assist you with this type of work but there might be another god or goddess that you feel drawn to use instead but that's just a suggestion for you so call her in speak from the heart or you could write a specific invocation for her just asking her to assist you with being calm and patient um, and i wouldn't necessarily when you do that invocation i wouldn't necessarily ask for it to be in just one specific situation even if there is one specific situation like definitely yes ask her for that I need help with too but kind of just just ask for it overall as well so it can kind of help bring in calm into your overall life too and then of course allow your candles to burn all the way out with that one um, with your words that you have on your altar I would either either bury them or towards the end of your candles burning out set them alight and burn your words so that it's kind of like sent up to universe to here's my request you know please take care of this request for me so either bury it somewhere or burn it and send that request away uh, that way so and then of course if you've used the crystals then you can start to carry the crystals which will be well and truly charged up with your intent from doing that spell as well so that would be my suggestion on a spell level uh, around the patients um, personally I've just noticed that there seems to be lots of people that are not feeling very calm and patient out there in the world at the moment so um, I think that it could be a good focus for some of us just to be able to get a little bit more centered again <laughs> So um, that's essentially the areas that I wanted to share with you guys tonight with the Capricorn supermoon that's coming up. Um, I also wanted to mention that our beautiful Laura has got an online meditation that she is doing for this Capricorn supermoon. Uh, it gets held on Zoom and will be this Thursday night uh, on the 14th of July at 8 p.m. And you can book that through Mystical Dragons website. Uh, we've got a study section there and under that there's an online and you'll see the full moon meditations. It also pops up on our Facebook page as well. I'll make sure it goes up at the very least tomorrow. We'll have another post, I'm sure, um, highlighting that too. Laura's meditations are really good and very intuitively guided and she uses the um, crystal bowls, uh, and a lot of her beautiful sound stuff and it goes for about an hour is always connected in with the current moon so it's connected in with that Capricorn uh, full moon energy as well so something you might consider doing 
to help you in connecting with that particular energy could be a really great way to connect with the energy before you think about doing a spell so it might be a wonderful prelude get you in the right space before you do any kind of magic or spell work just something to consider uh, so do check that out as well so I hope this has helped to give you some inspiration for the coming full moon. It's only a few days away, but still time to get us ready. 